Bird, my company is Crystal Edge Technology Screens. I like to start every morning off with opening up my curtains and showing off my 17s. So 17s, we have a signature 17, which is our own customized uh, screen paint that we do for our blackout cloths. But today we're not going to be talking about that. Today we're going to be talking about the question I get asked all the time is can I paint my motorized projection screen? I get this all the time from customers wondering if they can repaint over their white screens with the technology we have. And keep in mind the technology is designed for fully lit environments. You know, you can take a cheap $68 or $98 projection screen and you can go in and paint it with our technology and use it in a fully lit environment. So over here, we got two of them fired up this is the screen i painted painted this a couple about of last week i can roll this screen up roll it down i've done it over and over again in demonstrations once you code it this is black technology the 12. once you code it on with the 12 you can use that in a fully lit environment your screen's not going to wash out on you it's not going to fade on you your colors are not going to wash out on you you do not have to worry about calibrating your projector I still can't get over that the people still calibrate projectors. Calibrating projectors, pretty much, they did that with white projection screens because a white projection screen couldn't pull up proper color and contrast. And even in the dark, they just wanted to get more color or more performance out of the projector. And there's nothing wrong with the projector, clearly because it comes down to the screens. I use older 720p projectors and I never have that problem. And as you can see, I can be in a fully lit environment. And I don't even have that problem. Now, I'm going to go over into the next room over here. And I'm going to be showing you my custom gaming screen. This is the Apocalypse. I'm going to call it the Apocalypse because that's what it is. I know it's a little junky in here. I'm still doing wired management in this environment right here. So this is my customized screen setup I have in here. There is the projector and stand already finished and done with the chair to match. I just got to fire this up with the projector right now. I mean, um, the um, system is in sleep mode right now. So there it is out of sleep mode. And that is on the Gamer Paint, which I haven't had time to launch. I've been a little busy. Haven't had time to get around to that one right there. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a roll up and roll down to show you that. You can roll the screen up. You can roll it down. You don't have to worry about the paint cracking or peeling. All right. So let me come over here and let me put in my uh, my um, what do you call my what you call blah 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 my power. Start rolling this up. And we'll begin. Whoops, just wrong way. There we go. Now this one's coated with our customized gamer paint. Like I said, I haven't had time to launch the product yet, but it will be launching soon. And we'll stop it there. All right, bring it back down. Now both of these screens right here, I paid about $68 for, including the shipping. Shipping was included. Now if you live overseas, I don't know if they're gonna ship international and if the charges are gonna be a little different, but that's what it cost me here in the US to actually get this motorized projection screen. The size of this screen is around 92 inches is all I could fit in my environment. The biggest they make them is 100 inches. Let me see if I bring it down a little bit more. Oops, let me break down. I don't have the remote control to this one. There we go, that fits right now. So I can roll that up and down. This is perfect here because I have a door with sliding doors here and I need to be able to get back and forth out of here from grabbing something for the for the uh, gaming room. So this screen has to be to roll up, has to be to roll down. All right, so the other one I have over in here is for my windows. So in here, I need for this screen to also be to roll up and down. Because as I said before, this is being used to block my window light from coming through. So if I'm doing demonstrations in here, 
I have to make sure this screen can roll up also. So bring this one up. This screen I decided to do differently. I wanted something that was going to have a bit of a um, reverse. I've done one of these reverse. I got these reverse screens where basically the border is white and the screen's black. I did a fixed frame. Decided to do a motorized one next. So yeah, you can paint over motorized projection screens with no problem whatsoever. Very easy to do. And there is the 12 technology activating. There we go. See? Easy. Cheap, fast. It's not hard to do. It's very easy to do. This job was a little bit more complicated because I literally painted the border a different color. So I had to go two different ways. How did you paint the screen this way? I did a tutorial video how to do it. It's not hard, but it does take some time. So literally you're going to have to tape inside the screen, which means you can't have any tape overlapping the screen at all, period. It has to fit perfectly. Your frog tape has to fit perfectly inside the screen. Then you're going to have to paint the outside of the screen, which means all this at the bottom, all that has to be covered up. Once you get the outside painted, then you take the tape off the inside and you put it on the outside of the screen and then you paint the inside of the screen. It's the same thing like I did this one. Same way I did the custom, oh shoot, walking away with the remote control. Like I said, bad habits I have with walking away with remote controls and then later on I walk into the video like, where the freak is that remote? Same thing we have in here with the apocalypse. There's the apocalypse right there already set up. That's all done. Stand, all that's finished. Same thing with this one. This one was done even as even a heavier custom job. I want to do something completely different with this one. I showed this off on TikTok. I got so many people that were actually coming and commenting about this projection screen. They're like, how the freak did you do that? Why is the screen that color? My most interesting part was why is the screen that color? This is the new gamer paint that we have. I just haven't had any time to launch it because I told you I've been really busy. I got screen paints right now. We haven't even had time to launch. Right now, I just got my, uh, this morning waking up. Lord blessed me and gave me my ingredients for the outdoor screen paint already in my head, all ready to go. And I haven't had time to launch this shit. This is the gamer paint that I haven't had time to do. It's been busy. See how the contrast levels pull through the screen? And this screen is like a greenish color. So now you seem to roll up and roll down on the screen. I don't have a remote control with this one. There's the stand, finally finished and completed. I got raised on the stand alone by itself. That's a cardboard box right there. I'll give you a close up look at this thing. A lot of people are always curious about the box and the stand on it. But there's the stand. I gotta do wire management. That's my next stage if I get a chance to get that done. And there's the Apocalypse Projector, custom paint job, all finished up. There's a busted container right there showing the bio goo leaking out of the container. I'll show you the other side of it right here. Matches the projector, matches the screen. Someone was asking me, are we going to do customized projectors and customized screens? I was like, no, not doing that. That's a lot of work, people. Yeah, this is a lot of work. Paint jobs are really easy to do. I did a tutorial on the paint job. If you missed that, uh, sorry. But I did a tutorial on the paint job showing you how to do it. You should I did it with all my videos. I'll show you how to do those custom jobs. And there's the custom paint job. And this right here is the... Uh, 
that's the uh, screen paint right there, the custom gamer paint, if we ever get a chance to launch it, which I don't even know about that one. There's my Oculus and all that other cool stuff. Bought down some of my retro toys from the upstairs. There is my uh, blue screen. That's the horizontal custom projector stand. I did a tutorial video showing you how to customize and build your own stands for your projector. Why well, don't go out and buy money, spend money for a projection screen stand. You can build your own. Now, if you're not mounted to the ceiling, that's a different story. I would mount, design with these for mount to the ceiling. But if you want to stick your projector up in a horizontal, to do that horizontal gaming, um, two things you're going to need. You're going to need that stand, and you're going to have to definitely run it through a PC because a PC you got to be to go into your display settings and put it in the portrait mode in order to be to get that effect to pull off. But um, other than that, as you can see, where's my stand at? Stands way over there. Still working on the this room right here. I should have been had this done. This is a small room. Should have been had this room finished. Just haven't had the time. Like I said, with everything else coming up, and now we got summertime coming up, and I got a million to one projects to work on outside. It has to be done. Different forms of projection screens. We're going to be painting because I got people sending us emails about inflatable screens and uh, fixed frame screens for outside. How to weatherproof a fixed frame screen? Because weatherproof, you have to weatherproof fixed frame screens. You stick one of them outside, your the velvet borders are going to bleed. I had one happen to me, and that, you learn from experience. I had one out there and the velvet, I came outside one day, it rained that day, and I'm not worried about the paint. I came out there one day and, and there was just these black lines all into the, the paint. I'm like, what the frig is this from? I found out that the water got into the velvet and it bled right into us. Like if you wear uh, suede sneakers, you're wearing white socks and you come in and you got red marks, whatever color your sneakers were, it's where it bled. So I figured out, Lord showed me how to coat, how to deal with that problem. And basically use a form of polyurethane and basically you want to weatherproof the um, the um, the velvet so that way when it rains it rolls off like a uh, water off a duck and it doesn't destroy your screen um, but the technology we're going to be working on outside you I still advise you to do that but the technology we're working on outside is going to be this super black outdoor screen paint and this stuff is going to be designed to make a white projection screen look like a black OLED TV. This stuff is going to be insane. I told you something pretty crazy. It will have a bit, it may have sun killer technology, it may not. I'm not showing that yet. Depends on what he lets me do. At the end of the day, I tell you that I have to answer to him and he tells me what I can do and what I can't do. Now, as I said before, and some people may not like this and I'm sorry, but if anyone's going to basically try to discredit my company or go against my company, your product will be down here. We will test your product. You can test our product. We don't care. Go to the website, order whatever you want, take it down to your facility, do your test. We do them down here all day long in our products. But if you're going to try to discredit our work, we're going to bring you down here. And if we find that you're doing a demonstration dishonest, because I will go through your videos and I will watch and look at your environment. And if I see that there are areas in there that you're basically half stepping it, you'll come down here and we'll do the test for real. And we'll show you exactly where you are not doing your test correctly. And if your screen is in a comfortable environment, it's not going to survive too well down here. I don't believe in that nonsense to begin with. Look at this. I love this right here. This is the gamer paint. Oh, I didn't even get a chance to play with this yet, man. I've been so busy, I haven't even had time to play with this. Are we going to do a tutorial? I don't want to do a tutorial. We have anything else on here? Um, what did I unlock? Is it options? We unlock anything on here? I really gotta start playing more games, man. It's kind of sad. All right, did I unlock? Oh, I did play this game a couple of times. Okay, what do we got? We got the new. I'm gonna do this one. I'm pretty sure I should pass this one. I got a D rating on that one. I need a joystick to this so badly. Pac-Man is not any good. The controllers that they have, man, control is okay, but it's not as good as a joystick. Oh, he is on the rampage, man. All right, buddy. Can I attack you? I guess I can't. Oh, he is on me. So I need that controller, that joystick. Got 
them ticked off. That's the big boy. When they get like that, that's the big boys. Oh, I'll tick them off. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I'm done. I know it's going to get around that one. Yeah, so the screen behind me, the one that's blue, the, the, uh, the horizontal, that's going to be changed out. It's a heavy screen. Uh, compared to the acoustics are light. There's no weight to those screens whatsoever. And I don't like the fact that my sound bar is on the floor. I don't want it on the floor at all, period. It collects a lot of dust down there. So I'm going to be, um, some people say, why don't you just mount it to the, um, why don't you just mount it to the wall? Where? It's the ceiling. The screen's 106 inches. It's big. So that screen's 106 inches. It goes all the way down to the floor. So that's going to be turned into an acoustic. That's coming off the wall. I'm going to put a 106 inch acoustic, throw all my speakers behind the back of it and be done with that. And then I can game on that screen, take that one out of here. And I may, I don't even know what I'm going to do with that, to tell you the truth. I really don't know what I'm going to do with that screen at all. And some of you say, why don't you just give it away? No, nah, it's not that easy. And the screens are expensive to ship. People understand it's very expensive to ship a screen. So, even if the person lived in Philadelphia, and I got a few customers that live in Philadelphia that, I wonder, I'm curious about that. You know, I might ship it to one of my customers in Philadelphia. I'm just wondering how much that would cost me. It shouldn't cost me that much money to ship it to somebody in Philadelphia. I got a few, like I said, I got a few customers that do business with in Philadelphia, and I can just ship it to them. They could have it, because I can't do anything with it, and I, I'm running out of space in the basement for screens. All right. Woo. All right, getting down there. Big man, there, big man, there, big man. Come on, get my camera. I don't even know where I'm at half the time when I'm playing this game. All right, there we go. I hate when you do the bouncing balls because I don't even know where I'm at half the time. I know I'm here, but I don't know where I'm at here. Where's here? There, there. There's here. There's here. Oh man, it's the big ghost, the big ghost. Ah, this is why I need a joystick for this. Can't really get in those areas I need to get to. Where's big man at? Oh man. See that big guy right there? That guy can flatline me so fast, it's not even funny. I need a joystick. I gotta go online and, and figure out exactly what it would cost me to get a joystick for this. Okay, come on, come on, come on. See, I can't get in that group because I need a joystick to do it. There we go, we got them. See what I mean? There you go. I hate that, man. You need a joystick, man. You have to have a joystick. Anybody remembers playing Pac-Man from back in the day with the arcade system, or arcade machines? You gotta have that joystick. All right. Yeah, here we go. Let's get this in. Right, where's the other one? Where's the other one? Where's the other one? There's the other one. Ah, the other one. Ah. There we go. Down, down, get that one, get that one, get that one. Where's he at? Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on. This is why you need that twist, it won't stick. There we go, gotcha. There we go. If you haven't played this, it's Pac-Man Championship. This is the truth. If you like, you like the old school games, I gotta get that last one. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Time to run out. Oh, come on, Mother Chicken George. Gotcha. Got you, last one. Woohoo! I gotta spend some more time in here. Yeah, I gotta yeah. yeah, I gotta spend more time in here. I don't spend any time in here at all. Alright. This is the gamer screen right here. I ain't get a chance to play with this yet. Um ba -bum 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 -bum. let's check out some of the uh nah. I'm just gonna do a little racing on here. I don't wanna do any racing on here. I'm gonna check this out real quick. 
I gotta, I gotta go in here and I gotta download. They're having a sale, so I gotta download some old school retro games for here too. But I don't usually use my PS4 in here. My, usually my PS4 is mainly used in the, in the, uh, the digital room. I'm usually in there most of the time if I do it in there. I try to stay out of the Japanese tea room. Oh, sorry about that. I try, to, I try to stay out of the Japanese tea room as much as possible because that room is just basically for relaxation. That's all that's for in there. That's all that's for. Um, okay, let me get this straight real quick. It doesn't bother me if you give me a like and take it away. I disable likes in the in the room. You do know that, right? So that doesn't bother me. My channel is not for likes. It's not for subscribers. It's not for views. It's designed strictly for advertisement. So when I get done over here, this video actually gets transferred to multiple sites that we advertise off. And then that gets transferred over to the website. Now, I do appreciate you coming in. I do appreciate if you add likes, but I say it's pointless not to add likes because we disabled those on the door. So some people come in and give me a like and take it away, thinking that bothers me. It doesn't bother me at all. This is strictly for advertising only. This is what it's set up for. So customers and companies can come in and view the technology and see exactly how it reacts. This is what they're designed for. This summer, the videos we're going to be doing are tutorial videos. They're going to be designed for teaching people how to design and build things and how to utilize our screen paint. So not to our loyal customers, but to individuals who feel that if you give me a like and you take it away, that's going to bother me. Dude, that is water off my back like a duck at the end of the day. It doesn't bother me. Because the next day I'll be on here with even more advanced technology than you just saw. I haven't even displayed this screen. This screen has been sitting here for about a week. And I've been so busy working on everything else, I never even had a chance to show you this. I only showed you the customization that I was doing to the screen. You never saw the screen paint in action because I didn't have time to do it. So if I don't have time to show you this technology that I'm displaying to you, what other technology do I have laying around that you haven't even seen yet? Huh. It's designed for advertisement. You come in and watch, that's good. But keep in mind, as these videos float around, they accumulate hits. I don't care if I got five people in here, one people, or nobody in here. At the end of the day, this tech, these videos are designed to basically advertise. That's what it is. But thank you so much. If you do apply likes, and thank you so much if you do subscribe. We do advise our customers to subscribe because our customers, that's how they get updates for their shipping information. Because we do all our ship out information, it's all recorded. Uh, allows our customers to know exactly how their orders are being processed and how they're being taken care of. So that's the only thing subscribers are good for on our end. Or it, basically, if you're going to be coming in to just watch and see what we're up to. But other than that, I mean, you can just go watch the video. You don't even have to be here to watch this. You can leave and then come back in and watch the video. It's going to be here. It's not going anywhere. So, like I said, I appreciate you coming in and watching, but you have to understand, my head and how I function with YouTube is not like everybody else. Most people, when they have these channels, they have to have people come in and watch. They have to have a certain amount of likes and all that. That's not for me. This is advertising. I told you at near the end of this year, what my Lord has set up for me is that we may be coming off YouTube altogether. You may not ever see us on YouTube again because we're going to be branching offline. We have contracts that are waiting for us because of our technology's advancements. I told you that these companies out here, it takes some years to develop technology, and they're watching me develop technology under minutes and days, which means there's an interest in our technology offline. Now, yes, we're still gonna have the website. Yes, you can still go order from the website, but we're gonna be dealing with much more bigger contracts. If you ever wonder why you don't see the exotics, well, there's a reason why the exotics are not on the site anymore. But that's all I can say. All right, so let's move on from there. I just put that out there because I have individuals that think, oh, if I give them a like and take it away, it's going to hurt them. No, it's not going to hurt me. Thank you for the like, but we don't really need it. We don't depend on that. This is advertisement. This is what it's designed for. And then you got customers that come in and want to look at the video and say, okay, can I paint a motorized projection screen? They come in to check to see if they can do that. That's why we roll the screens out. We roll them back down. It's for you to watch. It's to educate you. That's what it's for. All right, what were we just doing a few minutes ago? Uh, we were doing, uh, blah, 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 blah. Can we go back to that we were doing? Oh, yeah, we're doing this right here. All right, let's check this out. Well, 
I'm not trying to be rude or disrespectful, but that's what the, that's what the videos are designed for. That's why I don't people that want to do monetization or whatever it's called or get paid off YouTube. I don't want YouTube's money. I don't need their money. It, it's not our videos are not designed for that. They're designed basically for advertising. That's it. It's all they're useful. Not worried about that. We don't need it. God provides everything I need. Why would I need that? We already got a pre-order list set up for the new technology for outside that's going to be on the website. And we got people lined up to get that technology to turn their white projection screens into black OLEDs. That new black technology we're designing for outside. So yeah, we're good. But thank you so much. You know, if you're coming in and watching, you know, thank you so much. I appreciate that. But for the naysayers that think that we need all that, no, we, we don't. We're good. Trust me. I'm going to take this right here, take this one right here. Oh, yeah, I'm good with that one. You see how the colors pop up on the screen? This screen is green, by the way. It's like a greenish color. And, yes, we can use it in a fully lit environment. It's ambient light rejection technology. The color of that screen is green. I did a custom paint job for my screen in here because this, this is where the exotics come in because if I want to do a customized screen like say if I wanted to do like uh, blah, 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 what kind of screen would I like to do an X-Men I kind of think I was trying to do an X-Men would be pretty cool but anyway if I want to do a customized X-Men screen I can custom coat the color of the screen to match the theme for that particular X-Men Hang on the wrong side, on the wrong side. Ugh. I said, I appreciate you coming in and watching. Like I said, I told before on camera, these are advertisements. You know, you don't see, when you buy a projection screen, you don't see live advertisements. You don't see them tested out on different forms of projectors. You don't see them do uh, uh, swap outs. You don't see them do any of the test demonstrations that we do in our, in our demonstrations. This is what makes our company different from everybody else. Right now, no one has ever painted a customized projector, projector screen. I'm the only one who has a customized screen, projector, and stand to match all together. And customized paint job. No one has a screen like this. I'm the only one who has a screen. But it shows you what you can do with it. And like I said, calibrating projectors. I was talking to somebody yesterday. Uh, I was an Oculus. You meet a lot of interesting people in Oculus. I was an Oculus talking to a few people. And they were in the projection screen business. So we're in there talking. And I'm like, yeah. I said, people are still calibrating like their projectors. And the guy was like, I don't even know why. With the technology we have in projectors today, there is no excuse for you to calibrate a projector. You know how old calibrating is cal I told you calibrating is old. I mean, really old. I mean, they didn't have calibrating since the silent era, but keep in mind, white screens have been out since the silent era of movies. That's how old a white screen is. So, you're talking about somewhere between, I don't know, maybe 50s and 60s, somewhere around that era. You know, a lot of people were doing their home movies at home, they're doing slideshows and all that stuff. White screens have been around that long. But calibrating the projector just came because, due to the fact that people really couldn't get a really good proper picture in their environment. Keep in mind, they were actually already in the dark. There was no such thing as ambient light projection technology because it didn't exist. So people were basically calibrating their projectors to get the colors just right, probably like 70, 60 or 70, probably in that era. I gotta look, it up, look that up, but anyway, people were calibrating their projectors to get proper color and to get proper contrast. That's what calibrating is for, to, to, to better calibrate your, 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 um, your, your picture quality. And you're talking about, they're thinking because you're using an older projector. I'm using an older projector right now. All my projectors in here are old projectors. Outdated old projectors. As a matter of fact, I'm using one right now. That ultra short though projector, the one I got for 180 bucks, that's what I'm using right now for my screen. But the first thing people say is, oh, you have to calibrate this and calibrate that. That's old. If you have to calibrate your projector, there's something seriously wrong with your screen. You shouldn't have to do that. You watch me take projectors right out of the box, set them up, be done. That's it. Now, as for the ultra short though in the back, that particular projector has a completely different model number and I had to order a completely different lamp because I'm thinking, okay, this is probably, 
This is probably uh, the same model as the other ones I have in the house. Ooh, this is a big boy, man. I can't stand fighting this joker. But anyway, the model number doesn't match up to the lamps I have in my inventory. So I had to order an entire new lamp for that projector. So that one, we'll be doing that one again. I'm going to be showing that one off. And I'll show you my settings. Nothing's been changed. Everything will be in factory settings. And on top of that, you'll get a chance to see me actually put in a new lamp and on that projector right there if you happen to come across and get that particular model. And I'll explain to you the two particular models that can actually use the exact same lamp, which comes in handy. So we'll do a segment on that right there. But as for getting back for calibrating, yeah, if you gotta calibrate your projector, there's something wrong with your screen. Shouldn't have to do that. I've seen people calibrating with the newer projectors. How are you calibrating with an update projector? Are you kidding me? It's going on with your screen. It's like the demonstrations I showed you yesterday. Against that particular individual, I showed you right from the door, it can't pick up color. Our screens don't have to be calibrated because they have that color coding technology. Because oh, that's not real, check out the videos we just did yesterday. Now mind you, I did the black screens first. Still, the screen wasn't picking up. We went over to the exotics, we did blue, we did burgundy, still didn't pick up. And then we did a gray screen, our gray technology, our ultralight gray, which pulled a star to demonstration. We couldn't pull the star to demonstration. We couldn't pull proper color. That's why we don't have to calibrate. You're not worrying about calibrating on gray screens. I'm in here with a green screen. Ah, my back up in here with my back up. There we go. Gotcha. It's on fire. Uh, barbecue that brother. There we go. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Gotcha. Fully lit environment. That looks good. I ain't get a chance to play on a gaming screen yet. This is the first time we playing on this screen. Love you didn't have time to play on it. Uh, that's done. Yeah, we're worrying about calibrating. I don't gotta calibrate Jack. I've never calibrated a projector in my life. For what? That's an old outdated projector I'm using right here. All my projectors are outdated. They don't manufacture them. They don't make them anymore. They're old. And this is the answer for those of you. Can I paint a motorized projection screen? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can paint a motorized projection screen if you want. Like I said, these two screens, I bought them on eBay for $68. That's what it cost me. $68. That's all. And all I did was do my customized job. I wanted the border to be white on this one. I wanted the screen to be literally black because I did a fixed frame like that. And I liked it so much. I said, you know what? I'm going to do me another one. And that's on our black technology. That's a 12 right there. Very easy to do, very easy to paint on. Mind you, when we did the 12s, 12s were tested against 11 certified screens right from the door. They've done their 11 certified screens, they've done their long throw, short throw, the same test you see me do over and over again. All the screen paints have to go through the same process. They have to go through the same process of going outside to earn their labels, the same thing. So if this screen right here was able to produce better color in contrast than a $3,000 Dark Star 9, and this screen right here cost me $68, including if I was a customer and I paid for the paint, that'd have been $126 to paint, um, paint the screen. That's a lot cheaper than three grand. No narrow viewing comb effect. You can have it in a fully lit environment. And the screen's gonna pick up. I can take my camera, I can touch the side of my wall, and you'll see that image crystal clear. Which means when I sit down at my desk over here, if I'm watching a movie on this, on this screen, I'm expecting to be able to sit on my office chair here, work on my computer, and see my screen crystal clear right from here. I should be able to see that screen and the other screen over there with no problem. In a fully lit environment. And you got people that are in there calibrating their projectors because the colors are not coming up right or darkening the environment. 
darkening the curtains and all that other nonsense. For what? That's a lot of headache. A lot of headache. I'm gonna get another one of these for outside. I'm gonna do an outside motorized projection screen. I told you, I'm, either if I don't do this one, if I do this one, that means I gotta take it down and bring it in the house. But if I get one of the Elite screens, because Elite has an outdoor projection screen, I can just leave it out there to tell you the truth. I need that one for demonstrations. So the question, can you roll it up and down? Yep, you roll it up and down. Go out and buy yourself a cheap white. One of the good thing about white screens is the fact they're cheap. And like I said, once you code over with our technology, you know, Let's do this from a side angle. I'm gonna say this looking from a side angle. I'm curious. I'm gonna do those though. Side angle. Like I said, anybody at the end of the day can paint a projection screen. Anybody. But it's our technology is what makes the screen what it is. And since they don't do our tests, they don't have the performance of our technology. Our test backs up our technology on what it can do. And you see me on camera. On camera, sometimes I go a little crazy. I see if we can pull this back 22 feet. We see if we can pull this back 30 feet and see what happens. I can walk about my house with all my lights on and my screens will all activate. the black screen keep in mind that's a 12 that's supposed to be so dark you can't see the screen I love saying that I love repeating that over and over again later on we're going to do another demonstration TV versus 12 TV versus 12 let's go in here and check the signature we may be coming up with some different signature screens I'm thinking about doing a blue signature acoustic screen coming up soon it's going to have a signature acoustic coating on it that will allow you to have that blue technology embedded onto it. So we're thinking about actually taking the exotic and actually turning some of them into signatures and actually this is a custom coat job. I'm actually gonna be doing a blue acoustic signature for the next room over there for gaming because the blue in gaming looks insane. The colors come up crazy. That's why I said the exotics for insane colors. So I wanna do one in there. So that is, I'm gonna be doing, I might be doing one of the first tests to show it off. I think this is the one for downstairs. You picked up two of these. Also, too, a little trick. If you're using LED lights right around your screen, these things will basically transfer your lights automatically to white, or they will transfer them to like a blink in multiple colors. Now, if you go over to your controller and you're trying to change your lights back to where they were and it doesn't change at all, don't get panicked. Don't go out and... Um, which I did. I went out and bought all new boxes because I thought the IRO boxes were defective. Which I did. Spent all this money and found out it's just basically all you got to do is just unplug it for a while, plug it back in, and it resets itself. And they automatically turn white because my staircase downstairs turned jet white. The ceiling turned white. And I'm like, what the freak is going on? And then I found that these remote controls sometimes, once in the blue moon, will trigger your lights to go off in a weird way. So. All you have to if you're using a fire stick, don't don't bother to unplug it. Let it set for a while and then come back in. That reminds me too. I gotta buy batteries and I gotta go get some some other stuff on here. Let's see. I was in here checking out VR, looking at VR like all kinds of crazy stuff, and that's what I usually do in here. Samsung 4K demonstrations.
Like I said, when I said ambient light rejection, you're supposed to be able to use your screens. That's why I like, that's why I moved my TV. My TV was here. I used to have this big TV over there and I moved it and put it over there. So that way I can have enough light pushing it through the window so I can see my screen. I gotta put my privacy curtains up too. Because like I said, even with those curtains being as light as they are, I still feel like they're blocking too much light for me. I like for this area to be well lit. And this is the part I get on about the ambient light rejection. When people are sitting in the dark blocking out their curtains and all that other nonsense because you're worried about your screen washing out and all that other work. Well, I don't get it. Philips 4K demonstration. I don't know what that's like. Honestly, to tell you the truth, I don't know what it's like to calibrate a projector. I don't know what it's like to sit in a dark environment. I really don't know what that's like. I'm used to getting up every morning, pulling my curtains to the side like this. Pause that for a minute. And looking at the beautiful scenery. I got my squirrels to be running up and down here before it's time for feeding time. They'll run up in here to my yard. This is what I'm used to seeing. Or sometimes they had a couple of golf tournaments. They had a golf tournament yesterday. So I sat out here. I put my chair here. And I watched the golf tournament, and then over here I was watching a little TV back and forth. Got the swivel one here. So you should be able to see right outside your windows with no problem whatsoever. And you should be able to display your screen. And these are acoustics. This one's going to be transferred pretty soon into a blue. Colors don't fade, don't wash out. Starfield demonstration. Getting that from YouTube. Are you working well today this or are you not? This is what it feels like wearing regular shoes. No all around support. And this is what it's like wearing Skechers Arch Fit footwear. It's all the comfort and support you need. Get a white level. It's good. So white levels with a 17. Try Skechers Arch Fit footwear with podiatrist certified arch support. I'm going to leave my Starfield on right now. I'm doing stuff the other screens can't do. They can't come on here and show you a fully lit environment. They definitely can't show you a Starfield demonstration. Oops, about to do it again. Carrying the remote control to the next room. Let's put you back over here. Got my nice, beautiful blue screen over here. Starfield demonstration. environment now we do these because every so once in a while we get somebody saying well I can do the same thing he can do pull that star field that jet black image y'all can't go there we can go where y'all can go we can go to pull bright images all that on our screens Y'all just can't go where we can go. We can go to contrast levels if we choose. And mind you, yesterday I showed it off on screens that weren't even black. Like I said, we did the painted a blue. We did the burgundy blades. These are the exotics. They're not even black screens. And then we did an ultra light screen that pulled a contrast. It pulled a Starfield demonstration and better color than any other gray screen out there. And I keep telling you, when you do them, we do demonstrations against those gray screens which I'm going to be doing one a day. Again, on that gray screen, we're going to do all contrasts only on the gray screen. That's how it's supposed to be represented to the customer. You're not supposed to take a gray screen and show a whole bunch of bright, beautiful colors off of it because it's going to do that regardless because that screen is designed to pull a higher white level. It's supposed to show off this one thing that the screen is not designed to do, and that's to pull off contrast. 
Phillips 4K demonstration. See my environment, see how it's not sitting in the dark? Even with the screen over top of my windows, look how well lit my environment is. That light gives off a lot of light. sea turtles 4k sea turtles mm -hmm. like some sea turtles We gotta be doing that one next versus the TV. I love doing the versus TV. When I did that, I was like, oh, 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 oh. I didn't know that technology. Wait, my, there you go. Carrying the remote control off again. We'll put it back. I'm teaching myself not to uh, not to carry the remote control off. Because that's one of the worst habits that I have. Is walking off with remote controls. I do like to watch my turtles in here. Show you from different angles. And then we'll move right over here to my office area. My other office area. And show you the angle from here. $68 projector. Cheap white screen coated with our technology. Oh, I'm doing it again, ain't I? Yep, there we go. I'm learning. This is how I lose my remote controls. I'll grab one, and then I'll basically take that one and mix it up with another one. LG, snowboarding demonstration. Getting that from YouTube. <laughs> Colors 4K. Getting that from YouTube. Only Verizon gives you more of the best. 5G from America's most reliable network. More See? things you can mix and Get up in the morning. No calibrating. You love. No black curtains. No dimming light in my environment. None of that. Just Verizon. wake up. This is how I wake up in the morning. Turn my screen on. Good. Environment nice and bright. Oh, 
Now I know this has nothing to do with motorized projection screens, but it's just to show my customers and people are potentially about to become customers of ours on how they don't have to be stuck in an environment worrying about whether or not if their curtains, because when I get this from people, people call me up and say, hey, look, my environment's really dark. You know, they're explaining to me their environment's dark. The first thing I say is, well, you don't have to deal with that. You don't have to be in a dark environment. You don't have to worry about blacking out your curtains. You don't have to worry about dimming your lights. You don't have to worry about trying to design some ambient light controlled environment by peppering lights throughout your environment in order to accommodate your screen. And you're definitely not going to calibrate. I mean, come on. Like, seriously, you think I'm going to sit here, show you a tutorial video on how to calibrate a projector? I don't have time for that. I got other things to do. The time I can be showing you how to calibrate a projector is the time I can be downstairs designing something new. Nobody wants that headache. At the end of the day, people just want something they can paint, they can set up and be done with it. They don't want to go in and they don't want to calibrate this. They don't want to be blacking out curtains. They don't want to change their environment for the screen. If that's the case, might just buy a TV at the end of the day. TV, you don't have to you buy a TV. Let me know next time you bought a TV and you automatically have to worry about the lighting in your environment. You have to worry about if you have too much light coming through the windows or the environment's not dark enough or all that other nonsense. I've seen people calibrate TVs and I, I still understand what that's all about. I don't. I really don't. There's no way in the world I'm going to spend the money they charge you for a TV today and I got to calibrate it. Are you kidding me? Let's go through this right here and see what we got going on. Ooh. Something with black levels. We get enough of these. definitely coming back to this I got something to test this on too we got another acoustic screen downstairs and then we're going to do an acoustic blue that ain't a bad idea for a name acoustic blue that'd be that new blue technology we'll actually bid that to that one yeah we're going to make a couple of interesting acoustic screens from that blackout club too we got the 235.1 now we got a 235.1 and 135 we're going to do, we got the signature black, which are, these are signature black, but we're going to do some different, which would be acoustics. We're going to do an acoustic blue, we might do an acoustic gaming screen, or we're going to do some really cool stuff with the acoustic setups. Out of all the screens that I have in this house, this is the one I love the most. Because the speakers are behind it, that's one thing that I love the most. I love the fact that you can quick one, boom, just watch TV, and have light coming in. I love the screen actually the most. It's one of my best screens. I love the acoustics. And when I built the screen at the time, I had a crazy headache, and I wasn't feeling good that day. I was feeling really sick that day. I almost passed out on front of camera because I was real sick that day. And I didn't want to, I was going to do the screen. The screen was actually going to be, I was going to paint over the screen. I'm mind, I'm saying this is just from my point of view, my personal point of view. I was just really sick that day. And it was easier for me because the surface was already recoded. I already did the surface like about, about a week ago. I just didn't have to figure out what I was going to do with it. And then after seeing the acoustic screen display downstairs, I'm like, I want one now. But this thing came in so much easier because for me, if I had painted this screen, it would have been a bit of a struggle that day because like I said, I was sick. But the fact that I had that acoustic surface already pre-coated, all I had to do was go tap, 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 stretch it over, tighten it up. It was done. It was it. Took it upstairs, hung it on the wall. This is it. Fastest screen ever put together. Already from the door. So consider the fact that you have a blackout cloth that's acoustic. Your sound can travel through it. It's ultra short though compatible. Which means some of the screens I had laying against it, I was corrected by YouTubers saying, hey, look, you can't use that particular screen on an ultra short though. It has to be on a long throw. That shows you right there that you don't have that. That's one hassle you don't have to deal with, whether it's ultra short though or long throw compatible. Then on top of that, consider the fact that I got both of my windows behind me so I can have my environment in a fully lit environment so the screen absorbs a ton of ambient light. And they're fully weatherproof and all that other good stuff. But on top of that, like I said, for you don't, if you can't paint on your walls, some people have restrictions where they can't paint on their walls or they may not be savvy at basically painting all together. You know what I mean? They may not trust their painting skills. This is fantastic. Take it out of the box, snap it to your frame, you're done. It's kind of like having a... Um, a high performance screen that you can just staple into a frame and be done with it. That's what I love about the acoustics. And I can throw my speakers behind the back of it, and there's no speakers being seen. So I can't even see my speakers. 
at all. I love that. That bright color is popping up on it. That's what I love about the acoustics. We're asking, what's your favorite screen? It's definitely this one. That's why I'm considering the 235.1 downstairs. I might be converting that to a 158 inch 235.1 acoustic screen with a custom sound bar built into it. That's probably going to be the length of the screen. Now we've already tested this against Elite makes an acoustic screen. They have an all white one. And I did this test already against Vivastorm that has an acoustic screen. Like I said, screen outperformed all of them because like I said, it's jet black. And again, again, I can come in on my angle gain and just go, if I'm coming through the door, I can watch my screen right from here. With no problem. And this is the same screen, mind you, and I'm gonna mention his name. I don't care if you don't like it or not, but like I said, you asked to be putting these test demonstrations, that's what you got. We put your screen against this technology on a 4300 lumen projector, and we sat it literally right on top of the screen. You couldn't match the screen. You couldn't match in the color, you couldn't match in the contrast. The only thing you had going for your screen were white levels, but as I said before, if our technology didn't have white levels, you wouldn't be able to see any of this at all. It'd be too dark for you to see it. It has to display some sort of white levels. see or you can't see the screen especially the fact that people are saying well it's too dark well it's too dark I have windows behind me right now and my screen's firing up and you can see it crystal clear but if you tried the same demonstration your screen would wash out and you wouldn't be to see it at all I have a customer who bought the hundred inch came back in and bought the hundred and twenty inch he liked it so much Now, the reason why we did that demonstration against this product, because he felt the need, as I said before, if you're going to mention our technology, be careful because we'll throw you against it. And he meant, he felt the need to show a demonstration of me actually displaying the 235.1. And I guess you were talking about how the screen wasn't this, that, and the other. Not a problem. I'll take your screen paint. I'll put it against my 17 and I'll put it right up on top of a 43 and show you where your screen will fail next to this technology. Now, what do you got to say about it? You can also to blow that video up and you can actually do a tutorial on that one too. Matter of fact, we did a couple of your screen paints yesterday. So we did two of them at the same time against our screen. Two of your screen paints against one of mine yesterday. And just to show you how advanced our technology is, we did a gray screen, gray screen versus gray screen. Meanwhile, I'm in here in a fully lit environment doing some gaming. Ugh. Going on here. Oh, Pete Man. This ain't making any noise. He just goes. The same thing goes for any other company that feels the need that they want to challenge our technology. Ain't no problem. Go to the website, buy it, and we'll buy your product. But if I check out your demonstrations and I see an ambient light controlled environment, I know what's going to happen when you get down here. I like this screen. I got to do me another one of these screens. I'm going to do another theme screen. I'm going to call them theme projection screens. That's what I'm going to call them. But I had a few people ask me over on Instagram and over on TikTok, are we going to be customizing these with the projectors? No, I'm not doing that. That's a lot of work. Now, if I had a department that did it, that'd be nice. Other than that, no. Hey, get back here. Jumping like a rabbit. Check this flame. We got his block up. Block that fire. Oh! He's a little tougher to take in. Right. 
Gotcha. Gotcha in the wall. I'm with the daylight thing. I need to take that flame. Take that flame. Barbecue. Where you going? <laughs> All right. Ugh. Oh, come on. How are you going to get that in there? That's just bogus all together. I got you. It's on fire. Need that back up. Need that back up. There we go. Thank you. Take that. Get back. Get back. Get back. Oh, nice. 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 It reminds me of Power Stone so much. Power Stone! Oh man, are you really sure you're gonna get with that? Ah, come on, man! Some phony nonsense. Gotcha. Gotcha. So our ship out date for this week is going to be Saturday. Ooh, sorry about that. Our ship out is going to be on Saturday. Ugh, I am tired. And we get a calm day today. We're going outside because yesterday was a no can do. We got so much wind that came up out of nowhere. There's no way to was going to be but the camera equipment. And well, my camera on a stand and my projector about it being blown over because yesterday I don't know what was going on. Like, we had many tornadoes going through the neighborhood. So, today I'm going to be popping outside. I got to feed squirrels and all. And I'll get a chance to see if it's light because I do want to do a demonstration before I take it down on 135 inch out there because that screen sat out there through quite a few snowstorms. And I want to be able to do a demonstration off of it, a few of them, before we actually take that screen up because I told you I'm rebuilding that entire area for something new and I'm going to be doing ultra short those setups and acoustic so I got a customized screen design already set up for an acoustic projection screen and ultra short those set up for my deck and I'm going to be redoing the entire deck so it's going to be completely different like I said you ever seen that when you go to Ikea and have they have them little setups like a little, little um like an outdoor like an indoor kind of setup I want the same thing outside as if you're walking inside but you're actually outside Oh, we got the big boys on this one. Good gracious. I know, oh, I don't like fighting this guy, man. This guy's a pain in the freaking neck to take down. Oh, man, he's going to run that all day, man. Burn you, burn you, burn you, burn you. Oh, you got me a hit. Look at that, look at that, man. He's going to kick my butt. Yeah, I'm dead. I'm going to take some damage off of him before I get the other ones getting there. Yeah, he got me that quick. He was bad. I can hate this guy so much. I beat this game. He was a nightmare to get through. Already from the door. What's the block out on this? There we go. And you can't block them. You can block them, but you still take damage if you block them. You're drop kicking me in the face.
come on now, come on, come on, come on. That double team nonsense is bull. He blocked all that, yes he did. And he got that, then he got that, oh. No, get away, get away, that nightmare! I hate that freaking move. He's a special character too, I haven't had a chance to unlock him yet. He's a freaking nightmare. Eh, whatever. I don't want to return the menu. I gotta be out of anywhere I can work to do today. Can't be here all day. Isn't that sad? Well, I can't be in here all day. I literally don't even get a chance to play in this room. I don't know what's sadder, me taking the time to build this room, and the, or basically the fact that I don't even never get a chance to come in here and play anything. Mm, this is why I'm actually considering, and like I said, maybe five years, I'm retiring, I'm done. I want, I want time to play my stuff. I don't get any time to even enjoy the stuff that I build and design. Birds in my yard? Are those are birds out in all my spring. Wait a minute back here. I gotta order their food too. Let me run it up this. When was the last time I was running up this? Beautiful screen. Unfortunately, the gamer paint that's attached to it, I don't have time to launch it. I don't. I'm sorry, I just don't have the time. I got too much right now. Maybe somewhere in two months or something we'll have it launched, but right now I just don't have the time. Keep in mind, it has to be tested. I have it against my screen. It's never going through any of the tests, which I really don't have to worry about because I know it'll pass all of them. As I said before, at the end of the day, all my technology comes from God, so I know it's going to pass every demonstration. But in order for me to actually give, to get for it to earn its label, it has to pass all its test demonstrations. I just haven't had the time. So right now, I got the new technology coming out for the outdoor projection screens. I'm working on um, the acoustics. Now are going to have signature uh, exotic coatings attached to them. Exotic coatings attached to them. And then uh, there's the the exotics. People understand where the exotics at. It's a little bit of a, I can't say too much about it. I signed some papers. I can't say much about it, um, but I'm just gonna leave it at that. Anyway, let's see. So let's go from here. I like this right here. So I just got a lot. And right now with the outdoor screens, I can't wait to do that because that's gonna be a roll on and spray on application. It has to be spray on too and roll on because like I said, we're going to be, there's some people are going to be doing outdoor applications, not going to be just only customers. We're going to have basically companies going to be using this stuff for uh, outdoor uh, screens and stuff like that. Keep in mind, because of COVID, a lot of people can't, a lot of people don't want to do the indoor seating. They want to be to go outside and they have to have a screen that's going to be to produce a beautiful image outside. And this is where this technology is going to be selling at its highest point because companies are going to be using this and utilizing this for outdoor events. So, you know, that is going to require some testing.
showing the color capability on this screen. That's the demonstration done too much to death. I'm not doing that. That's been done to death. Say yep, and answer your question. Can you paint a motorized projection screen? Yes, you can. I'll tell you, don't, don't even go out and buy an expensive motorized screen for what you just paint over top of it. These projection screens, you see, most people don't want to go near the cheap ones because they're afraid of the motors are going to burn out. This particular company, I've been using it for quite some time. Um, I've never had a problem with the motors burning out, never had a problem at all. And I've bought quite a few of these screens right here. And I've never had a problem with a motor burnout at all. And if you want to go on the cheap way of actually buying a motorized screen, yeah, because motorized screens can get quite expensive. Right now, I would like to swap out my hundred on my hundred and twenty-six downstairs for a 120 inch elite motorized projection screen the reason why i'm paying the money for that is because this is going to be my main screen and i need tension i need a tension screen that's what i want at 120 inches i want tension and tension is not cheap it's not cheap at all and especially if it's under elite because i like how elite screens are designed I like that black look they have huge massive casing over at the top and the bottom i like how the screens are set up so you're talking about 2700 dollar screen that's white not it's not a dark star nine it's a white screen that costs 27 i think about 2700 dollars or maybe cheaper than that maybe 15 16 i don't know i have to go check and see how much they went for that motorized screen i think about 15 or 1600 bucks maybe a little more than that because it's tension once you pass the 100 100 inch mark it, it starts going up depending on whether or not you're going to have a tension screen or if you're going to have a non-tension screen I like the tension screens because the tension screens, when they come out, they leave flat every single time. Now, keep in mind, if you get a motorized projection screen, the bigger you get, and without the tension attached to it, the higher the chance you will get the ripple effect. And the ripple effect is where the screen basically gets that wavy ripple in the screen, and that could distort your image. So, that's why people go toward uh, tension screens, because when the tension screen comes out, it's going to leave flat every single time. That's why they like tension, but unfortunately, attention screens are expensive. They're not cheap. So all together, my projector for this setup in here cost me, I paid $130 for this projector because this projector didn't come with, the guy had two different kinds of projectors, I'll sure throw. He had one for $180 with the door for the filter and one without the door for the filter was $130. That's what it cost. I got this one for $130. And what I did was I just went online and just bought the door and connected it. The door was like 50 cents. So I connected it with a new door on the side. Uh, other than that, the screen itself, like I said, $68. And that's including shipping. And the shipping time is fast. I was expecting to get it somewhere maybe a week. After I bought it, I got it two days after I bought it, which was extremely fast. I wasn't expecting to look out the door and there's a screen sitting on my door. And as for the screen paint, really can't give you a price on screen paint because this is a test formula that's on the screen right now. It's a gamer paint. Can't give you any information on that, but the one in the next room, I can because that's a 12 back there. Curious what my setup looks like. Like I said, you can look at and see my customized 
um, apocalypse paint job to match my projector and that like I said is a cardboard box right there simple cardboard box the bottom of that is a United States shipping box turn that to my uh, setup right there and God gives you amazing ideas it does gives you amazing ideas I don't have to spend any money at all that's when I get talking to people like how much you pay for your projector how much you pay for your screen like really why spending too much money The way things are going in this economy, the one thing you should be doing is trying to figure out ways how to get better quality for less money. That's why we do the certified screens. When people come, I got people who have money, they can say, well, look, what's the difference between you and, you know, a DMP Supernova, a Dark Star 9, or any of the high end screens? Here's a demonstration screen doing 11 screens all at the same time. There you go. At the end of the day, everybody, if you have it, you still want to save it. So let me show you right here. Uh, turn my projector off. So you can see the actual color of the screen. That's the color of the screen. It's not black. It's not gray. It's green. It's a green screen. It's a gamer screen. It's green. It's got that color coding technology embedded inside of it. That screen over there is blue. That's a blue projection screen over there. Same blue technology we got downstairs. Let me see what's going on in this next room over here. I think when I show this screen off, I think this pretty much upsets our naysayers. These are naysayers are people who basically don't like my technology. And, um, for the longest time, have tried to discredit my work. I told you, all my technology comes from God. Good job doing that one. That's not going to, you haven't get too far on that one. I told you, at the end of the day, all my technology comes from God. That's why I can sit here in the middle of my room with two windows behind me and I can watch movies and whatever I want to watch and you can't do it. This is for the naysayers. Did we walk off with a remote control again? Yes, we did. I told you I was going to do it. In any, every video I walk off with remote controls all the time. Let's go see where we can get the other one at. I hope it's not in the other one. Can you use a black screen in a fully lit environment? Nay, it cannot be done. It cannot be done. Well, God says it can be done. That's why you're looking at one right now. I love this screen. This one lost that. on my PC right now, right next to an open window.
skirts like wearing regular shoes. No all around support. And this is what it's like in Skechers for the arch fit footwear. It's all the comfort and support you need. Three yeah. It's good to have support. Try Skechers Arch Fit, an IQ certified arch support. environment. Keep in mind, the other individual, every time you mention my product on something, I'm going to put your product against it. We already placed two orders as of today for the rest of your products. They're all, we'll have all of them here. So anytime you feel the need to do a demonstration or talk about my product, we'll put you against it over here. As I said before, two orders have already been placed. And you won't know where they're coming from. So just to let you know, those of you who do order this product, you're going to be put through with some ridicule. He's going to put you through, trying to figure out who's who, because the orders already went through. And they're actually they're going to be placed by this week. So they're going to be here, not to do any testing against, just in case if you decide to open your mouth against, against my technology again, we'll do the test again here again. You can't match our great technology, you can't match any of our technology. This time, these demonstrations we put against the new black technology for outside. We won't be doing any inside tests. This will be all outside next. I'm going to have to paint half. Let me see what we got to do here. Now we're going to do some more demonstrations for two against that ultra gray. I like doing the gray screens because I like doing contrast demonstrations off those screens. Get a chance to play with that a little bit today. There you go. Both my windows are open. We got more light push it in. Like I said, all the sunlight hits here. So it's getting closer and closer right there. That line's going to push in pretty soon. And I'm going to back up over here. So you can see both of my screens at the same time. Both of them are being displayed next to window light. Now I can do a demonstration with my camera right here in the corner. And you can see both screens at the same time being hit with window light here and hit me hit with window light there. Or I can walk over to my screen and I can turn on an angle. I can see my image here. I can turn on an angle, I can see my image here. This is how, you're, how your screens are supposed to react this way. But not everybody's got used to that same protocol because, oh, it's a projector, you know, your screen's going to wash out a little bit. That's a bunch of nonsense, man. They feed you that nonsense so basically they can make poor quality screens and you just deal with it because that's supposed to be the normal. That's the problem. Has to be done in an ambient light controlled environment because that's protocol. You have to use it with a high end projector to get better picture quality because that's protocol. You gotta calibrate it because that's protocol. They've been feeding you this nonsense for the longest time. No, you don't have to go through that nonsense. There's nothing wrong with these projectors at all. You got projection screen companies that work with projector, projection screens. It's a hand in hand back and forth. We'll display your projector with your screen. We'll play your screen with the projector. 
You want to optimize the best view and picture quality in a fully lit environment. This is a special ambient light projection screen. This is whatever so and so and so, blah, 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 blah. So how come I'm here in this demonstration live doing off a projector that cost me 180 bucks, 180 bucks, 720p outdated projector, fully lit environment, and you can see both screens with no problem. Because when you take it home and put it in your environment, because you don't have a $50,000 projector and it doesn't look the same way in the demonstration, or even close to it, the first thing you're going to say is, well, you know, how much ambient light you have in the environment, maybe you might want to darken the windows a little bit. They're telling you, you got to change your environment to accommodate the projection screen. Go to a forum site, try to get information, they feed you the same nonsense. It's expected. Your bitch is going to wash out a little bit. If you ask the question, what about black screens? Oh, black screens are too dark. The images don't pop up. White levels are poor. You can't pull a proper image. Watching somebody do it right here live. It's unheard of to watch a TV or a screen in a fully lit environment. Got to be in the dark to do that. It's a lie. There's nothing wrong with these projectors. These 720p projectors, nothing wrong with them. At all, period. That's why I got 720p. Only, only 1080p I have in the house, it's a Chrissy 505. Everything in this house runs off 720p except for that 505. And pretty soon, I'm going to be replacing that with a 720p. And the screen that's going outside, it's going to have a 720p, another ultra short throw. So let's see. While we're not believing the nonsense, I bought myself one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ultra short throw projectors for 180 bucks. And I got them throughout the entire house. The one in the next room, which I'm actually ordering the lamp for, is going in the kitchen. Then I'll put another one outside on the deck. Even if you look at it, the projector I have downstairs, which is the ViewSonic, which I did the unboxing on that one, didn't change anything, set it up, was done, no calibrating. Even on that setup, I had a $4,000 wallet on that projector. Did I buy 4K? Did I buy 1080p? Nope, I bought a 720p XGA projector. So all I needed. I can see out my windows. That's why I love that commercial with uh, Ep no, Epson with, um, oh, what's the company called? Elite Screens. We said, my windows are open. No, they're not. They're not open. Your blinds are not even open. Because I can tell by looking at that demonstration, you had a thin ray of light coming through each crack, which means they were on a slant, which means when the light was coming through, it hit the slant and it went straight down instead of going directly through. Because that area would have been much more well lit than that. And then where the windows were placed, they were placed here and here, and the screen was in the center. That wouldn't have touched your screen to begin with. But mine, on the other hand, are right in the line of window light. That's why my background looks nice and bright. Like at the end of the day, you get what you paid for. Not me. I can walk about my environment with all my lights on and my screens will still pull up. Cheap $68 motorized projection screen painted with 12 technology. And mind you, one individual tried to paint it that 12s were so dark that you couldn't even see them, but yet I can do demonstrations in fully lit environments that they can't even go. This screen can pull a star field demonstration, contrast, the white levels, the whole nine yards, and they couldn't even begin to even do that. 
Look how far I can leave over an angle and still see my screen. You see the water rippling at the top. See that? Well, I'm out of here. I got much to do. Uh, I'm going to be back on here to do some demonstrations for uh, some of uh, the gray screen paint. We'll do some more demonstrations on that. Uh, we're going to be doing some demonstrations on outdoors, which hopefully we didn't have a windy day. Yesterday we had a really bad windy day that came out of nowhere, and I don't feel like having my projector knocked over or my equipment damaged. So we'll probably get a chance. I don't see any wind gusts going on right now, so we'll get a chance to play outside because... I want to see what that 135 inch screen, it went through a whole lot of punishment. We went through three snowstorms, a couple of rainstorms, and a few ice storms. And I want to do a demonstration off that screen before it's actually taken down, removed, and the new screen is going to be set up for the acoustic. And I know people are saying, well, how are you going to put an acoustic screen? Because light's going to travel to the back of it. Actually, the back of that screen, I'm going to design the stage. So it's going to be a light stage from here to here. It's going to have a nice platform that sits out that's going to sit the ultra short though behind it. And then the screen, which is going to be acoustic, 120 inch, is going to fit onto the, on the front of that um, background, and it's going to have hinges on it. I'm putting hinges on the top, so when I put my speakers behind it, if I want to get access to I can just lift the entire screen up and get to my speakers and LED lights and then bring it down. It'll lock in place. Ah, pretty cool idea. Thank my Lord and Savior for that one, because he's the one that gave me the idea how to build that one. That's going to be a pretty cool stand, pretty cool setup for my, uh, my screen. And like I said, at the end of the day, before you even go in and buy our products, do your research first. Go check around on the internet, see how many people are doing demonstrations on our level, and then you get back with us. With that being said, thank you for your time. I have to go, and God bless.